right, everybody, we're going to talk here about some liver tumors. Um, these, uh, a couple of these very commonly come up on your exam. So um, it's going to be really important that you watch this and understand particularly those two. And I will, um, I will let you know what those are. Um, one of the challenges uh, for diagnosing liver tumors is that commonly we discover these incidentally. And so very similar to finding a coin lesion in the lungs, you're going to be starting from scratch. So a lot of these patients don't have symptoms. And so you're going to have to figure out what that tumor is without necessarily having a clinical picture. And so the history is going to be important. The age, the uh, biological sex, the uh, any possible symptoms that they may have, but more importantly, uh, their history, whether they're exposed to carcinogens, certain carcinogens, whether they uh, are taking certain medications, it's going to be really important. So this is a way that the USMLE can challenge you. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. Definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. All right, so we are going to be focusing on these four. Uh, the two most important for your exam are the hepatic adenoma and focal nodular hyperplasia. Um, so they're not the two most common. Uh, hepatic hemangioma is the most common, but these are the two that most commonly come up on your exam. So here's our anatomy. If you don't know the anatomy of the liver, I would strongly suggest you acquaint yourself, um, but uh, I don't spend too much time talking about anatomy um, because that's step one stuff. All right, so hep hepatic hemangiomas are the most common benign tumor affecting the liver. Um, they don't turn into cancer. Um, there are a couple that do, uh, but these do not turn into cancer. They're usually asymptomatic and discovered incidentally. So you're getting a right upper quadrant ultrasound, maybe for some biliary colic. Uh, you're getting a right upper quadrant ultrasound. Uh, for right upper quadrant pain and you find this mass, even if it's not the mass causing the problem, uh, you discover it incidentally. Uh, it can rupture, but it's not as likely to rupture as the hepatic adenoma, which we'll get to. Uh, the diagnosis is typically going to be gathered on sonography. Like I said, it's typically found incidentally, and right upper quadrant ultrasound is one of the more common ways that we visualize the liver. Um, Doppler can be useful as well. Um, you do that with your ultrasound. Usually it's just a setting that you turn on. And then CT or MRI should be performed if you do in fact find a liver mass and that goes for all of them. We don't biopsy this. Um, generally tumors that are very vascular, we try to avoid biopsying for obvious reasons. Um, so generally, um, we're going to make this diagnosis based on imaging. And that's something that kind of ties a lot of these liver tumors together, is that we're not as quick to go to biopsy as we commonly are with tumors. So for instance, if somebody's got a suspected esophageal cancer, endoscopy and biopsy. If somebody's got a breast tumor, Commonly, we do a core needle biopsy or a fine needle aspiration. So you're not going to be doing pathology so much on these tumors. A lot of these are going to be diagnosed based on imaging. The treatment. Um, if they are asymptomatic, if you discovered it incidentally, you leave it alone. If they have ruptured, uh, then, of course, you need to stabilize them, and then you're going to resect or do embolization. Hepatocellular adenoma is a famous one. This is strongly associated with oral contraceptives or androgen use, uh, but there are a number of other um, predisposing factors, another one being pregnancy. Basically, your disposition, uh, your predisposition for developing one of these tumors is based on the amount of circulating estrogen. So if you're taking oral contraceptives, those combined contraceptives that have both a progesterone and an estrogen uh, component, that can do it. 
uh, if you're taking anabolic steroids, either illicitly or for some other reason, remember that testosterone can get converted to estrogen via aromatase, uh, so that can predispose you as well. Women are affected more than men, whether this is actually due to their sex or due to the fact that they tend to be on oral contraceptives and men tend not to be. Um, they do have a higher uh, risk. Uh, there is malignant potential with these adenomas. About 4 to 8% will go on to become hepatocellular carcinomas. Um, so that's important to know. Uh, the symptoms, usually these are asymptomatic, um, about 10 to 25% uh, present ruptured, although the remainder do not. So the vast majority uh, do not present ruptured. And that's a good thing. Diagnosis. You suspect this based on sonography. Uh, assuming that they're, the patient's not unstable, then the best initial or the best next step is going to be uh, a CT abdomen with contrast. And then the treatment, if it's less than five centimeters and asymptomatic, then you just discontinue any offending medications or mitigate any risk factors and observe them. If it's more than five centimeters, and certainly if it's symptomatic, then you resect it. So uh, USMLE may want you to know that five centimeter cutoff. Technically, it's four to six centimeters or four to five centimeters, but um, I would say that you should go uh, more uh, liberally with answering surgery. Um, but, uh, you know, there are conflicting recommendations. Focal nodular hyperplasia is the second most common benign tumor of the liver. It also has a female predominance. There's a possible association with oral contraceptive use, but not everyone really agrees with that, and certainly it's not as strong as with the hepatocellular adenoma. Um, most of these patients are, again, asymptomatic. 70% are diagnosed incidentally. Uh, the diagnosis, again here, you suspect based on imaging and assuming there's no instability, you get a CT abdomen with contrast. Does that sound familiar? It should. It's the same as the last one. Now, what you'll see here and what you'll probably get tested on is with FNH, there tends to be a characteristic central scar. And you can see this especially on CT. MRI, of course, is more accurate than CT, but CT is what you should go with first, um, assuming they're, they're not unstable. Uh, this does not, this tends to not rupture, so these patients will tend to be stable, uh, but it can rupture. So, um, you know, I'm just putting that in there. Assuming, though, that it's not ruptured, of course, you're going to go with CT abdomen as your best next step. The treatment, uh, it's rarely necessary. If they do develop symptoms, which they almost always do not, um, then you would go with resection. So this is a focal nodular hyperplasia. In case you can't see the tumor, it is right here. It can be hard to kind of make out the boundaries, but here's your central scar right there, and that's very typical of FNH. So again here, you can see the tumor and a little tiny central scar. Okay, infantile hepatic hemangioma is actually fairly common. Um, so. This, the big differential, is what? Hepatoblastoma, okay? And hepatoblastoma is the number one cause of malignant tumors in pediatrics, and it's not common at all. Uh, so IHH has malignant potential, but more importantly, it's very crucial to make sure that what you're looking at is not a hepatoblastoma, and they can look pretty similar on imaging, um, although the USMLE is probably not going to test you on the imaging of an IHH. Usually this is diagnosed in infancy. It can also be diagnosed prenatally on ultrasound. Uh, this tends to present with hepatomegaly. Remember, it doesn't take a very big tumor to cause hepatomegaly or a palpable mass in an infant. They don't have a whole lot of body fat, so generally abdominal masses, flank masses are pretty easy to feel in small children. You diagnose this on sonography. Remember, we try to avoid any kind of ionizing radiation in children, uh, but if you uh, do suspect an IHH, then you do go ahead with CT with contrast. Now, the big way to, di uh, to distinguish IHH from hepatoblastoma is to get an alpha fetoprotein. If the alpha fetoprotein is elevated, then you are likely dealing with a hepatoblastoma. If, on the other hand, it is normal, then you are likely dealing with IHH. 
That being said, you are probably not going to be tested on alpha fetoprotein because the normal levels change depending on the age very early on in infancy. Um, so you may be told the AFP is normal or you may be told the AFP is high, but don't expect to be given numbers because they're impossible to memorize. Okay, so this is a big one here. The treatment is propranolol. Um, all these other things we've been talking about really don't have medical treatment. This does. So we give propranolol. Why do we give medication? Because actually these medications, uh, propranolol in particular, actually reduce the size of the hemangioma and also helps treat uh, some of the problems that can come from this, one of them being high output cardiac failure because of all the extra vasculature. Uh, so propranolol is the first line. Uh, however, if it is refractory to medical therapy, then you can manage it surgically. The good news with these is that you get spontaneous regression by uh, early toddlerhood, 12 to 18 months. Uh, but there is a risk for angiosarcoma. And then this is a step one note, uh, patients with hemangiomas, whether they be in the liver or elsewhere, you've got to keep an eye out. If they uh, have thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, consumptive coagulopathy, so look for heme problems. Uh, that is called Kassebach merritt syndrome. This is very unlikely to come up on step two or three, but it is fair game for step one, so keep that in mind. And then this is just a uh, recap of everything we talked about.